Today we're going to cover the administration tab on CardPoint. The first thing that you'll see is descriptors. Here you can change your legal name and how it'll appear in CardPoint. It doesn't change it anywhere else, just so you can identify which account you're in easily when you're in CardPoint. Also, if you have more than one location, you can make changes here to make this maybe location one or Phoenix or what have you. So therefore, if you have more than one location in other parts of CardPoint, you can easily tell them apart. The next portion is users. Here you can add a new user or you can edit existing users. So to add a new user, you fill out their first name, last name, email address, the time zone they're in, and then you can give them permissions, all locations or just one location, the access to the catalog, the virtual terminal, reporting, funding, gateway batches, uh, chargebacks and retrieval statements, billing, support, and you would save that that would now email that user and they could create a login and they'd have those access to those things once they logged in. You can also edit a user. This happens to be a standard user. I can go in here. I could give them admin permissions if I wanted to. I can delete the user or if you click reset password, that'll send them an email where they can reset their password. Uh, also, you can have location permissions. If they have more than one location, you could give them access to one or all locations or whatever. Site permissions. This is the card point site permissions. You can have access to the catalog, which is right there. Uh, the virtual terminal, which is right here. You can do these various items through the virtual terminal. Maybe you just give them authorizing capture. They can only run sales. Or maybe they can void and close batches and run sales. You can give them access to reporting. That reporting tab is right here. What do you want them to see in reporting? Do you want them to see funding, gateway batches, chargebacks, retrievals, statements, billing, and support tickets? And you just click update there, and that would update those settings. The next thing is dashboard notifications. Now the dashboard's over here, and those notifications show up right there. So again, we're back in dashboard notifications. So I gotta go users and dashboard notifications, okay? So on your dashboard, you could have all these various things you could set for that as well. The couple I like is chargeback and non-PCI compliance. Those are things you'd like to know right away. Uh, email notifications. So this will not only show up on the dashboard, but will email you. Again, there's uh, general funding report delays, uh, and you could do it per location too. This happens to be just one, but if you had different locations, you could set these notifications per location. Uh, per declined, refund, chargeback, batch summary, non PCI compliance, statements, funding summary, support tickets, and you could save that and you get emails for those various things. Also, here's the transactions, and this is the transactions process by Phil Larson. You could select the account. If you had more than one location, you can tell by location. This will tell you all the transactions that that user has processed. Very, very nice. Okay. By the way, this gray button is kind of hard to see. It's on a lot of windows in CardPoint. Nice to know that it's there. It's an easy way to get back to the previous screen. So the virtual terminal, you can set uh, uh, detailed settings. You can make it active or even require the CVV2 code. That's a security code. A USB device card entry, convenience fee, tip at time of sale. You could require that. It doesn't require them to make a tip, but it will show that they have a, you can allow them to put a tip in. You can charge a convenience fee. This is an interesting thing here. You can charge them and, and there's this uh, question mark here too, which will tell you, expose a field on the virtual terminal to enter an additional convenience fee. So that will charge the merchant. You can charge them a, a dollar amount, maybe $3 to charge a credit card. 
that is an uh, option you can do. You can um, store, automatically store profiles by default. We have that selected here. So we're storing all our customer data, which is nice for retrieval and rebilling. Uh, GSA, disable, disable pans, refund reason, and so forth. And all of these have a question mark. If you don't know what they are, you can click on the question mark and that'll tell you. And then you just save that and that will give you your virtual terminal settings and some of these fields can be required like cvv2 refund reason you have to type in something virtual terminal tax okay now there's custom fields there's 10 custom fields uh, we actually use a few of them we have rep name and details and you can put those in there and those will show up and they're required so you have to fill those out and you can have 10 of those you might have a for a doctor's office you might need a patient number or something like that okay and then receipts you can set up how your receipt will look right here and even the message at the end your satisfaction is very important to us uh, let me just go down here all sales are final no refunds that's nice to have on there that will help you with chargebacks if you have all sales final no refunds it makes it very difficult for a merchant to charge you back for uh, various reasons now the batching it's set the default is automatically close the batch for next day funding at the latest possible time 7 30 p.m and transactions so the blue part fan transactions funded next day if you go into the red it's going to be funded the second day Okay, and you can change that if you want to. You can disable it and manually close your batches. And then finally, we have security. In here, you can do it by location. And you can require a CVV2 or ABS, address verification. And, or you could even do it, say, if I only want to require these for a transaction, require that they match, that is, for a transaction over say $1,500 and you could save that. So a lot of great things in the administration uh, tab. Thank you for watching and uh, let us know if you have any questions in the comment section and we will let you know and we'll answer those and please subscribe. Thank you very much. Have a great day.